This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We are starting with some amazing news for fans of the MG4 EV and low-cost EVs, namely that MG New Zealand has announced a brand new entry-level model. As announced last week, the MG4 51 kilowatt hour Excite is going to launch from today with a starting price of just shy of 47,000 Kiwi dollars, which after taking into account available rebates, means that it will be the first EV that you can buy in Aotearoa for under 40 grand after incentives. If you remember, Gav got to see the MG4 for the first time at Fully Charged Live in Australia earlier this year. But I know that as soon as he can get his mitts on one to drive, he'll be giving you the very best review right here on Ecotricity's YouTube channel. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Chevrolet has officially held the first press drives for its Silverado EV work truck this week and early reviews are rolling in. While many seemed pleased by the 450 miles, 724 kilometers of EV range that the launch edition of the Silverado EV, the Silverado EV 4WT, comes with, they were less impressed by the truck's acceleration when towing a full 10,000 pounds or four and a half metric tons. More frustrating was the realization that Chevrolet has quietly scrapped plans to offer a $40,000 version of the Silverado EV work truck, with the yet to launch Silverado EV3 WT becoming the entry level work truck at nearly 75 grand. Moreover, only fleet customers will be able to order WT variants, with the consumer friendly RST expected to cost upwards of 106 grand. Over the past few years, we've watched as the global electricity grid mix has trended towards replacing fossil fuel generation with renewable energy generation instead. And while there have been some outliers who are commissioning more coal and oil power stations than anything else, we learned this week that the US is most certainly not one of them, with the latest data from the US Energy Information Administration, or EIA, showed that for the first third of this year, electricity generated from solar grew by 10.24% compared to to the same period last year. This represented faster growth than any other energy generation method. Add solar and wind power generation together for the period and they accounted for 17.9% of all electricity generated in the US. That's more than coal and nearly as much as nuclear power. While we reported last week that the Volkswagen Group was celebrating producing its one millionth MEB-based electric vehicle, the news from the company was less rosy this week. That's because midweek we learned that Volkswagen has scaled back some of its production plans at the MDEN production facility in northwest Germany, where it makes the ID4 and ID7. According to local reports, the facility will be closing its electric vehicle lines for one month during the summer and will cancel one production shift completely for two weeks. This is in contrast to the other non-electric vehicles produced at the same facility, whose production lines will continue with no break in output. Sources close to the company suggest that Volkswagen overestimated demand for its range of electric vehicles and thus has opted to halt production temporarily to allow stock levels to fall. It's probably pretty widely known by now that Chevrolet is ending the production of the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV this year to replace them with two new larger EVs, the Blazer EV and Equinox EV. This week, the first sellable Blazer EV rolled off the production line in Mexico, ahead of the official start of sales in the US this summer. The Blazer EV will launch at the 2LT trim and RS trim levels, selling for an estimated $47,500 and $52,000 respectively. Those looking for a more affordable Blazer EV will 
will need to wait for the One LT version, the launch and price for which have not been announced yet. Being built on the Ultium platform, the Blazer EV and Equinox EV, not to mention the Silverado EV, benefit from improved fast charging capabilities over the outgoing Bolt EV and Bolt EUV, but neither will offer a true replacement for the Bolt EV or Bolt EUV. As Tesla continues to push ever upwards and dominate the electric vehicle sales charts and more increasingly the automotive sales charts, it's looking to ramp up its production capabilities around the world. To that end, we've seen plenty of rumours floating around of late, naming potential deals for new Gigafactory sites, with one of the most recent rumours suggesting it was closing in on a deal to build a new $4.5 billion Gigafactory in Valencia, Spain. Yet after the news outlets leaked the information, it now appears Tesla has cut all ties with the regional government and ended all negotiations. It does seem a little bizarre that Tesla would just end negotiations for a facility just because of leaked information, but this wouldn't be the first time that Tesla has reacted badly to press leaks. Ford's F-150 Lightning electric pickup has been on sale in North America for just over a year, and even if its entry-level stock form is still extremely quick and extremely powerful. Now, according to CarBuzz, Ford has trademarked the name Flash to be used under a classification that covers automobiles, pickup trucks, electric vehicles, sport utility vehicles, and their structural parts. CarBuzz says it's the name that Ford is considering using for the high-performance variant of the F-150 Lightning it teased back in January. However, given Ford has remained quiet on the issue, this is definitely one in the rumor pile. And it's also important to note out here that automakers very often trademark things that they never actually use. That said, Ford has confirmed that it is working on a higher performance F-150 Lightning and the name Flash or Lightning Flash might be quite fun. What say you? Think of British automaker Lotus and you're likely going to think about small two-seat sports cars, Lotus's legendary tuning of European production cars and perhaps its part in bringing the Tesla Roadster to production. This week, Lotus published more details about its Electra, the upcoming electric SUV, a car which was revealed last year but which we keep forgetting is actually coming to market because putting Lotus and SUV in the same sentence feels antithetical. The Electra comes comes with a sizable 112 kilowatt hour 800 volt lithium ion battery pack that manages a respectable 175 watt hours of energy density per kilogram as well as a claimed range of up to 373 miles 600 kilometers per charge on the WLTP test cycle the bad bit though is the price which starts at an eye watering 89000 pounds or equivalent it's nearly eight years since the Volkswagen Dieselgate scandal rocked the automotive world and prosecutors are still actively prosecuting those responsible. The latest to receive their punishment is former Audi boss Rupert Stadler, who was the first former board member from Volkswagen to admit under oath that he was partly responsible for the company choosing to install emission cheat devices in some diesel vehicles. His admission of guilt, however, appears to have led to a pretty lenient sentence, with the court handing down a 21-month suspended sentence and a fine of 1.1 million euros, which frankly is something that's hardly going to be a push for a former CEO of Audi. Former colleagues at the firm who also received sentences this week were given similar treatment, but it is worth noting that former engineers have already served prison time. For the last few months, we've been keeping an eye on the troubling finances of Lordstown Motors, and this week, as we predicted, the company filed for bankruptcy protection. Filing for Chapter 11 this week, the firm blamed its souring relationship with Foxconn, a company it's begun legal proceedings against for alleged breach of contract. While Foxconn had originally promised to invest in Lordstown, reports from several sources this week suggest that Lordstown's current CEO was effectively go Hosted by Foxconn executives when he travelled to Taiwan to try and chase up the investment Foxconn promised Lordstown. But more telling to us is the fact that the company's former CEO and founder, Steve Burns, sold all remaining Lordstown stock he held in late May. 
Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? Because if you are and you're in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all of that information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes tons of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get great charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. In order to transition the world's private vehicle fleet to electric, it is a given that every country needs to see an increase in diverse and accessible public charging. This week, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the US, NREL for short, published its latest analysis indicating just how many charging stations will be needed nationwide in the US to sustain a total vehicle population of between 30 and 42 million plug-in vehicles by 2030, which, by the way, is far smaller than the current total US private vehicle fleet. Picking a mid-range number of 33 million plug-ins, it predicted the US will need 28 million charging points split between 26.8 million privately accessible level 1 and level 2 charging stations i.e. in your home, 182,000 publicly accessible fast charging stations, and then 1 million publicly accessible level 2 charging stations. More cars, of course, require more charging. And finally, while many of us are still focusing on getting ground-based transportation switched away from fossil fuels and towards more sustainable sources of energy, interest in and investment of electric vertical takeoff and landing craft is really taking off right now. No pun intended. Some companies developing EV tall craft are still very much in early prototype stages, while others are little more than technology demonstrators. But US company Joby Aviation has just celebrated receiving a special airworthiness certificate for the first aircraft built on the company's brand new pilot production line in Marina, California. While I think it is fair to note that a pilot production line is far from full-scale production and there are some technicalities being exploited here to claim the first since the company calls it a quote production prototype. We should note that Joby Aviation hopes to be the first eVTOL company to deliver a production eVTOL craft to a paying customer, none other than the US Air Force sometime next year. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out in the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't already switched yet, why not switch to Athera's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider? It is super easy to make the switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I won't be here next week, but don't worry because my buddy Kate Walton Elliott will be here instead to host this show and I will be back the following week. In the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge on this very channel. He's just done a range test in the MG ZS EV Long Range, basically the MG4's bigger brother, so make sure you check it out. It is definitely worth a watch. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.